Thanks for joining us. We're here today to talk about affirming the infinite individual worth of every American. On July 4th, the United States of America will mark 245 years of independence. Some see in our history an exceptional nation, uniquely free from the burdens and problems that hold down other countries. For me, that's a touch too self-congratulatory. If there is something distinct about the United States, it is not its unique achievements over 245 years, but the extraordinary challenges that it has faced. At least so argue the late Howard Thurman, the great African-American theologian and activist whose life is chronicled in a new book by my friend Peter Eisenstadt, Against the Hounds of Hell, A Life of Howard Thurman. Thurman, the grandson of slaves, grew up in the Jim Crow South, but his inquiring mind and his restless spirit would not be confined. He studied at Morehouse College, traveled to India to meet with Gandhi, and inspired a generation of civil rights activists, including Martin Luther King. Thurman saw a divine spark not in our achievements, but in our ongoing national experiment, the challenge of knitting together in one country, groups of people with different backgrounds, different interests, different cultural idioms. New York City in general, and Washington Heights in particular, have seen all the chapters in this story, from the earliest freedom struggles of African Americans to the ongoing efforts of immigrants to find homes in America. Can the descendants of enslaved people and slave owners, Native Americans and European settlers, the children of New Amsterdam and the children of recent immigrants live in one country? Can they recognize themselves as being part of a community with what Thurman called an inner sense of relatedness? Maybe. But judging from the current state of our union, we're not there yet. Our Declaration of Independence, as Thurman observed, enshrine two great principles as the pillars of our new country, equality and freedom. Almost a century after independence in his Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln argued that the United States needed to experience a new birth of freedom to ensure that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. But that new birth of freedom was stifled in the years after the Civil War. In the 1870s, the United States made its peace with racism and segregation. The consequences echo down to the present. In the second half of the 20th century, the civil rights movement affirmed the full humanity of African Americans and Latinos, set off battles for women's rights and LGBTQ rights, and reduced discrimination in our laws governing voting and immigration. How then do we form the more perfect union that is the challenge embedded in the Declaration of Independence and the Gettysburg Address? Race does not provide a basis for American citizenship or identity. Our country was multiracial from the start. Religion does not provide a basis for American citizenship. Our country may have been founded by Protestants, but ever since Irish and German Catholics came to the United States, especially in New York City in the 19th century, our country has been a nation of many faiths. The full rights of citizenship were once reserved only to men, but since the suffrage movement, that injustice has been chipped away. The saving grace of our legal system is not that it is always right, but that its great mistakes can be corrected. For Thurman, who saw how hatred disfigures both the hater and the hated, there was one ideal that could affirm and unite Americans in all their differences, what he called the equality of infinite worth. Thurman saw the spark of the divine in every human being, and that spark made each of us infinitely worthy of full inclusion in our society and the fullest development of our human potential. The idea of our infinite individual worth applied across the United States today might jar us out of our current impasse in which everything that helps one set of Americans is automatically seen as harming another. This definition of equality, Thurman said, is implicit in that aspect of the soul of America that is still in process of realizing itself in institutions, in communal relations, in social arrangements, and in the security of its laws. For me, the crucial phrase in that sentence is in process of realizing itself. Our journey and our struggles are not yet finished. Once we recognize that, we have grounds for both modesty and hope. To those who see our country as an exceptional place, free from the limits of other nations, I say that we still have lots of work to do before we affirm the infinite worth of every American. 
To those who see the depth of the inequalities and injustices that disfigure our country, we should steer clear of both despair and cynicism. Our work to form a more perfect union is not yet complete. But on our 245th Independence Day, we still have it in our power to build a country that affirms the infinite worth of every American. Happy 4th of July. I'm Rob Snyder, Manhattan Borough historian, and this is the power of spiritual artistry.